Hello and welcome. My name is Carsten Lutzen. I'm an Agile coach and a Scrum Master. Today I'll talk a bit about control charts, uh, which is a tool that I, to be honest, <laughs> it took too long for me to actually understand it and really get what I can use it for. But once I got my head around it, it is a super awesome way of looking into how are we doing and do we have a, any bottlenecks we need to cater for. If you like these videos, please subscribe and share. That would be super awesome. You can find control charts in, for instance, Jira and also with other tools. It's just yet another way of visualizing how are we doing, but it's not tied to just Scrum. It's also applicable in other ways of working and you can also make your own control chart. What you do is you have a a graph like this. So you have time on this axis. So 1st of January, 2nd of January and so on in a time span here. I usually do it if we have been running rather consistently and steady for some time. So maybe looking back two or three months just to get some history, some track record into it. And then we have on the Y axis, how many days have we been in a specific status? or have, has an issue been a specific status and this is often a logarithmic scale just uh, to to make it easier to see what is happening and these statuses for instance in Jira you can select what statuses uh, we want to focus on what I normally do when I look at this I'm interested in from when we start something all the way to it's done because that's that's really where we're working on it. I don't care if it's waiting for review. Our review process should be rather nimble and not hold up stuff. So doing and then review, often these two combined. It can also be interesting just to look at the review and see how many days is an issue in review and get some data around that because that tells us if this is in fact a bottleneck we should look into. If you have access to a Black Belt Six Sigma, Six Sigma people, then get them to analyze your control chart. It's quite amazing what they can pull out of a control chart and really give you some insights. Anywho, what you then do is you start to plot uh, all your all your issues. So, for instance, let's say that this first issue has been in uh, doing and review for for ten days, for instance. One has been in 18 days. And then we start to to have it like this. We can also some visualize clusters like like this or a bigger, bigger dot. But just that means that we have more issues that have uh, been around the same uh, value. And that is quite good for us to know because that might be something for us to look at. We might also have some what we did they often call outlines because they're significantly different from the other one. It can be interesting to look into this, but they're probably not uh, describing anything about the rest of the data. And with all this data plotted, it's quite interesting to then look at is there any similarities between the lower ones and the higher ones and so on. But what we then get is often an average and this is an average over the entire time period. So it could for instance be like this. Meaning that on average a story from when we move it from to do through doing through review into done. This is only done issues that we are drawing by the way. Then it's on average 12 days. That would be 12 working days. So one work week and two days. That is actually quite nice because then we have some idea of when we start something. We can maybe start to also let our stakeholders know that in 12 working days time on average you will get some value. We can also s start to see how are we doing with the rolling average. So the rolling average will move a bit but of course be somewhat centered around the overall average, but that's simply to 
sell us at any given point and we can also sometimes see trends if the rolling average is going up which that means uh, we are getting not slower but we're spending more time in these statuses and of course the op opposite we also sometimes people plot the standard deviation uh, as a colored background to show how how much um, of the data set falls in one standard deviation. Again, that tells us something about our predictability. But the nice thing about this control chart is that we can then start to look at, for instance, bottleneck in review or bottleneck in, in testing or whatever, and figure out how much is that hurting us? Is it something we should look at or do we have other problems? We can start to make predictions of, in two weeks time, we have so-and-so uh, confidence uh, based on the data that we will actually have finished these four tasks and so on. Again, depending on how much spread do we have uh, in our data set, if we are pretty good at creating uniform size backlog items, these should be somewhat identical, right? And that again just heightens our predictability. And this control chart is just, it, it's really a tool that just keeps on giving when you start to break it down into more uniform tasks and so on. Yeah, I'm I really love this and I've been using it for a couple of years and I can just say start to use it as well. I'm hoping that some of you will share how are you using control charts. That would be awesome. And that's it. If you have questions, ideas or feedback to these videos, please let me know. S leave a comment, send me a message. That would be awesome. And as always, have a super awesome day.